Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, can we have you come in and be seated? The program uh, for the live stream is going to start very, very shortly. And uh, we do have some people who want to uh, also entertain us here as well. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Uncle Bill Buchanan. I've met many of you. Others of you I am um, yet to, uh, to meet. And uh, please take the opportunity while we're networking at the end of this session to um, uh, say hello. And also um, to say hello to some of our uh, Reconciliation Queensland board members and our co-patrons, uh, uh, Dame Quinton Bryce and Dr Jackie Huggins as well. I'm going to, um, going to start uh, by first of all acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands of Queensland and particularly of the lands where we are today and uh, their elders past, present and emerging and uh, particularly the ancestors in the dream time because it's essentially their custodianship of these lands which has left us such a pristine environment in which to raise our children and to leave a legacy for our future generations. This morning, we have um, many people who are still yet to actually join us in, uh, <coughs> who are still clearing through security. And uh, however, we are going to start um, our, our proceedings now. The first thing I'd like to sort of say to you, one and all, is, um, is welcome. And a little later on, I'm going to ask the speaker of this house, um, who is the, the, uh, the person suitably qualified, I think, to give you a, a welcome to this place. I'm going to um, sort of ask now that we'll just take one minute and uh, essentially let a few more people come in and be seated, particularly our guests. And um, what we'll do is we'll actually start the proceedings straight away. Thanks.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, again. We're going to start the program. We will be running a little bit late um, and um, on our scheduling, but um, what I'd like to do first off is just a little bit of housekeeping. When you've come in, you'll notice there are exit signs and uh, you will need to simply follow those out. The, uh, the staff here will usher us out, uh, but please do that in an orderly fashion if you can. Thanks. And they will show you where to assemble. The other thing is, is the, the, for the people up in the Indumbi room, we have two, two function levels happening. Just so as you know, we have a, a function happening upstairs which is all screened and everyone's looking at us uh, up there as well. And um, I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge um, that uh, the, uh, the people in the Indumbi room have actually probably got a much nicer opener space than what we've got here, which is a bit crowded. And uh, you'll notice these pillows in this room make it a bit hard to see at times. Uh, there are screens at the back, so I hope you all get a good view this morning. I'm going to uh, start the program now, and we're just going to move straight into our, um, our first item, which will be with the tribal experience dancers. And I'm going to ask Tom Coghill and his team to come out and uh, share a cultural and spiritual welcome. Tom. <laughs> experiences. We come from the Yagura country, uh, Turbul Yagura country. We come to show you a bit of showcase of dancing. This is Malacha, welcome song and dance of the Yagura people. Oh, nani a Yagura no! Oh, nambali a Yagura malada! Hey! Hey! Welcome. This is Maroon, totem of the Yagara people, the Sangawana. This next song and dance is another totem dance of the Yugara people. 
Uh, Yugun Bay people is called Mibin, the ancestor, the ancestor song. Mibin is the eagle. Hurry, 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 hurry. Mibin na na yore, ha yore no le la. Ha mibin na na yore, ha yore no le la. Mibin na na yore, ha yore no le la. Ha mibin na na yore, ha yore no le la. Chai, 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 jump my head. We hope you've enjoyed our performances. We'd like to thank you for inviting us down here to share some of our culture. In our language for farewell, we say, your way, your way. Ladies and gentlemen, the um, tribal experienced dancers, can we just uh, acknowledge them? And it's been 60,000 millennia, and those stories are still held and passed on through families. And uh, you've just had the opportunity to share in some of what they experience on a daily basis. I can tell you, Two's a Crowd is a working acoustic duo performing their interpretations with a wide range of music. But importantly, the Two's a Crowd is essentially a band that was formed in 2019 by experienced Indigenous performers Shah G and Daniel Dow, two's Torres Strait Islander men. This morning, they will share with us some of their culture, not their contemporary, but more in a contemporary style. And it'll be a traditional hymn this morning from the Torres Straits, Ad, Ad Sorrel. And it'll be sung in English and Miriam Murr. And then follow, following that, they're going to share with us a traditional Torres Strait blessing for the meal that we will soon commence. Ladies and gentlemen, Shaji, Daniel Dow, to the crowd. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it's honoured to be here uh, to share some of our, um, our culture with you and do a couple of hymns. Uh, we want to acknowledge that we are being from the Torres Strait Islands. Uh, we do have a, uh, uh, an affinity uh, with um, the celebration known as Coming of the Light, which is uh, soon coming. And um, it's uh, a very important part of Torres Strait culture. It's um, not a lot of people want to hear, but the gospel was widely accepted and happily presented in the Torres Strait because it's such a spiritually dark place. And when the light came, the light really came to the Torres Straits. So we celebrate it every year. The landing of the London Missionary Society is a celebration in our culture. Lord, listen to my cry. Adosor. Lord, listen, listen to my cry. Lord, listen, my God, listen to my cry. Lord, listen. Listen to my cry, Lord, listen, my God, listen to my cry, we your name, we your name, praise from the Morning 
until the sun has set. My God, listen to my cry. My God, listen to my cry. Kiki Marane. Hey, the spirit I eat him love. Menalimbarai gili. Oh, kara, kara iya so. Hey, kiki marane. I eat him love, and then I limba raigili. Oh, kara, kara iya so. Why kara, kara, kara iya so? Why kara, kara, kara iya so? So, uh, it's not actually a, a, a traditional blessing for food, but it is a, a blessing all the same and a benediction. Be blessed today. Thank you. With that hymn. So, thank you. Can we just acknowledge them and uh, as we move forward? This morning. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not just here at the official launch of Reconciliation Queensland with us and for a breakfast. You're actually part of a live streaming event that's going out throughout Queensland. We've got six other major events happening around the state right now. And they're joined in to us. And they're actually seeing what you're seeing this morning as well. As well as they're having their own program a little later on. I'd like to take the opportunity to acknowledge those, uh, those events from the top of Queensland, from the, um, the electorate of one of our, well, our first Torres Strait Islander uh, uh, Member of Parliament and first female Torres Strait Islander Member of Parliament, Parliament um, uh, the Honourable Cynthia Louis, and uh, from the Cookshire, 
the citizens of Cookshire are joining us this morning from uh, a place called Nature's Powerhouse. So I'd like to acknowledge the Cookshire and the Mayor there, Peter, Peter Scott. We also have, um, coming, coming down from there, we have the citizens of Queensland with Mayor Bob Manning um, are actually joining us from an event at the Pullman Cairns. So can we acknowledge them as well this morning, please? There's also the citizens of the Cassowary Coast. And the Cassowary Coast, as you know, was really hit quite hard by Yahtzee and recently had a few stumbles with uh, their, uh, the, uh, the cyclone that was in the region up there. And certainly very close to the electorate of our speaker here at the House, uh, the Honourable Curtis Pitt. And uh, they're coming to us from their new Tully Sporting Centre. So could we actually acknowledge them as well? We have um, Mayor Jenny Hill and the citizens of Townsville are joining us this morning also from a, um, a, uh, a breakfast that they're having there. So can we acknowledge uh, the citizens of Townsville and also the citizens of Mount Isa and Mayor Daniel Slade and the Calcadoon traditional owners and there are tr traditional owners attending and uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander First Nations people attending all of the events this morning as well. But the, certainly the, the uh, citizens of Mount Isa, please, can we acknowledge them in the far west? We, um, and I do know that Robbie Catt is here with us this morning. So Robbie, I, uh, I know everyone will be happy to hear that. Um, now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, we have a packed hall in uh, packed community hall in Moorumbah in the Isaac region in the central Queensland cold producing area and uh, with Mayor Annie Baker. So the citizens of Isaac have come from far and wide to the little town of Moorumbah and they have actually got over 100 people in that little session there this morning. So can we acknowledge them as well? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to now move into the official launch of Reconciliation Week. We're going to follow that then with some information for you, well not so much information, I've, we've got a, some speakers to speak to you about and to carry on with the theme of Reconciliation Week. Now the theme for Reconciliation Week, as many of you will know, is more than a word, reconciliation takes action. That's more than a word, reconciliation takes action. That's the theme that the Australian Reconciliation Network felt was appropriate for this year. For the last 30 years, we've done a lot of talking. There's been a lot of reports. We've still yet to get through the recommendations of the Royal Commission to Aboriginal Islander Deaths in Custody and the Council for Aboriginal Reconciliation. And a little later, we'll have Uncle Bill Lower and Dr Jackie Huggins giving us some of their recollections of the Council for Aboriginal Reconciliation journey. But I'd like now to introduce the co-chair of Reconciliation Queensland, um, Mr Leon Filewood. And Leon at the moment is actually flying to Horn Island up in the Torres Straits. And he pre-recorded a session with Auntie Heather Castledine for you this morning. And we also have uh, Mrs. Ms Karen Mundine, the CEO of Reconciliation Australia. And she will introduce the theme for us as well this morning of, uh, of what uh, we, we, we have this year, which is more than a word, reconciliation tax action, and talk a little bit about that. And then we have the Honourable Paul de Jersey, our Governor of Queensland, and he will officially launch the 2021 Recon National Reconciliation Week for Queensland. Now, can I say, the last time we did this, the person who is in the room with us today was the person who officially launched it then and happened to be the Governor-General, and that was Dame Quinton Bryce. So, ladies and gentlemen, Dame Quinton Bryce is one of our co-patrons and so is Auntie Jackie Huggins. Could we just take a moment to acknowledge <laughs> their journey? Without further ado now, I'm going to hand it over to Mr Leon Filewood, our Indigenous co-chair for uh, Reconciliation Queensland and a Torres Strait Islander man, and he'll introduce himself to you. Thank you. 
Good morning, everybody. My name is Leon Farwood. Uh, my ancestors are from Kukuyalanji, Kukumini, and Girame, uh, up in, in far north Queensland. And my Aboriginal, uh, my Torres Strait ancestry is from the Yuga Ramle, Stephen Island in the east, and the Mualga, Litsagal people from Mua in the west of the Torres Strait. Uh, I'm also the Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander co-chair of Reconciliation Queensland. Uh, before I proceed, I just want to acknowledge all traditional custodians from wherever within the state of Queensland that may be joining us this morning. Um, I'd like to acknowledge your elders, both those in the dreaming, those present, and those emerging. And I, I acknowledge and honour the connection that you all have to your respective countries. I'd like to acknowledge the Honourable Paul de Jersey, Governor of Queensland, the Honourable Craig Crawford, Minister for Seniors and Disability Services and the Minister for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Partnerships. I acknowledge the Honourable Curtis Pitt, Speaker for the Legislative Assembly. I acknowledge all members of the Queensland Parliament in attendance. I'd like to acknowledge the co-patron for Reconciliation Queensland, Dame Quinton Bryce, as well as the Aboriginal co-patron for Reconciliation Queensland, Dr. Jackie Huggins. I acknowledge Mr. James Palmer, Asset President for BHP Mitsubishi Alliance. And I'd also like to acknowledge my co-chair, Mr. Peter Jackson, as well as other members of the uh, Management Committee for Reconciliation Queensland. I further acknowledge the RAP organisations attending, as well as our reconciliation partners and allies. Specifically to the families in the Torres Strait, uh, in the east uh, of the Torres Strait and, and both on the mainland, uh, I say to, to you all, Debi Dimwabim, Maya, which means good morning to you all, welcome. And to families in central and west uh, Torres Strait, as well as uh, countrymen and family on the mainland, I say kapu migi batainga, senopa, which means good morning and welcome. I'm sorry I can't be there this morning with you, with you all. Um, I'm currently attending Sorry Business in the Torres Strait. Uh, I'd like to wish you all a great National Reconciliation Week, uh, a time for reflection uh, and celebration. Enjoy your breakfast because we have a lot of work to do over the coming years. I'd like to now to pass to Annie Heather Castledine. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on whose land we're meeting here today across Queensland. My name's Auntie Heather Castledine. I'm a Camilla Roy Kuma woman from far southwestern Queensland. That means my people came from around the Inverell area in New South Wales and migrated to Queensland and I was born in a place called St George, which is in Cooma country. I now work in Nugambin land in Logan. Today is the beginning of Reconciliation Queensland Week and I'd like to acknowledge the elders, not only here in Brisbane, but across Queensland as well. I'd like to acknowledge the, the elders that have gone before us and those that are emerging in the future. I'd also like to acknowledge any sorry business that's happening here as well. And there's certainly been a lot of that with the COVID and everything that's been happening. I'd also like to acknowledge the Stolen Generation people. These were the people that were forcibly removed from the homelands and put on the missions and reserves. I'd also like to acknowledge the Stolen Generation people that make up Australian society. These were the people in the beginning that came as convicts and slaves, forcibly brought here from the other side of the world and were forced to come to Australia and those that have come since then fleeing wars and strife across the world to make Australia their home as well. And I'd, also, I'd like to acknowledge these people as well, for these are the people that make up not only our society, but also our Aboriginal families and that as well, because we all become one. Meet, we're walking together, living together and being part of Australian society. Reconciliation Week, is a great time for us to all come together and meet and learn about each other, not only Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, but also Australian society, because reconciliation works in both ways, not only across 
our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, but also the other parts of Australian society as well. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. I'm glad to be joining you in virtual spirit at Reconciliation Queensland's National Reconciliation Week breakfast. While I can't be with you there at Mangin, I acknowledge and pay respects to its First Nation owners and custodians. As I know many of you are streaming in from towns and regions right across the state, I also extend my respect to all First Nations peoples of Queensland. I acknowledge your elders and your custodianship of your lands going back tens of thousands of years. I'd also like to acknowledge and pay respect to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation from whose lands I'm recording this message. The theme of this National Reconciliation Week is more pertinent than ever. More than a word, reconciliation takes action. Today, there is far greater awareness of First Nations cultures, histories and knowledges. Many more people are now grasping the real, lasting and devastating impacts of colonialism on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. But as all of you gathered at Queensland Parliament know, and, and I know you watching at home at, on the live stream are only too aware, First Nations people still face inexcusable levels of discrimination, racism and inequality. That is why this National Reconciliation Week, we're pushing for braver action on reconciliation. Raised awareness has to lead to better outcomes for our peoples. And for this to happen, we need supporters speaking up, speaking the truth and ultimately pushing on the harder issues. I know from endorsing Queensland's Parliament's Reconciliation Action Plan that your state is on the right track for driving braver action. And in this spirit of the theme moving from safe to brave, this November we're holding the first Australian Reconciliation Convention in more than 20 years. We're bringing the community together to talk about more courageous and more impactful action in the reconciliation movement. I encourage you to head to reconciliation.org.au to register your interest in this landmark event. So that's it from me today. I hope you have a thoughtful, impactful and motivating National Reconciliation Week. I hope today inspires you to braver action in the days, weeks and months ahead. And I thank you for your continued support for a just, equitable and reconciled Australia. Thank you. Good morning. It is now almost seven years since I was sworn in as Queensland's 26th Governor. That was on the 29th of July 2014, and in the address I gave that day on the Speaker's Green, here in the heart of Queensland's Parliament House, I thanked our Indigenous fellow citizens and acknowledged their ancient attachment to the land. I also firmly stated my mission to serve all Queenslanders in a spirit of reconciliation and togetherness. Today, as my term of office approaches its conclusion, I am delighted to have the opportunity to restate that commitment at this launch of the inaugural National Reconciliation Week breakfast in Queensland. I have watched with pride as Reconciliation Queensland has grown in influence and stature and it is an enormous credit to their efforts that Queensland today is the first and only Australian state in which all key governance institutions have an active reconciliation action plan. The vision, dedication and sheer hard work that produced that result is also very clearly behind today's launch. It is no small task to live stream an event simultaneously to parallel celebrations in coastal communities from the islands of the Torres Strait to Brisbane and west to the Northern Territory border. I congratulate everyone involved in planning and organising this launch and the other celebrations. The Reconciliation Queensland Committee and the growing network of local reconciliation groups and committees working across the state have all clearly embraced this year's official National Reconciliation Week theme, Reconciliation Takes Action. Reconciliation Queensland and the regional groups deserve the thanks of all Queenslanders for their ongoing commitment to creating and nurturing an equitable and informed Queensland and a society in which our shared past is acknowledged and the first Australians are recognised and respected. It now gives me great pleasure to formally launch National Reconciliation Week 2021 in Queensland. Thank you.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, 20, National Reconciliation Week 2021 is officially launched. And I now call upon the Honourable Curtis Pitt, Speaker of the Legislative Assembly for, of the Queensland Parliament, to give you a welcome this morning. The Honourable Curtis Pitt, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, firstly, can I acknowledge that we are gathered today on the land of Aboriginal people and pay my respects to elders past and present. Uh, we're very fortunate in this country of ours to have two of the world's oldest continuing living cultures in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples whose lands, winds and waters we all now share. Can I uh, make a few acknowledgements? I do want to acknowledge uh, the Honourable Paul de Jersey AC, Governor of Queensland, who just joined us on live stream to launch this week. Uh, Minister for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Partnerships, the Honourable Craig Crawford, uh, the Honourable Leanne Enoch uh, MP, who is uh, also here with us this morning, uh, Cynthia Louie, uh, the member for Cook, and I believe uh, uh, Lance McCallum is also here. We're very proud to have three um, uh, First Nations people in our parliament uh, representing uh, the interests of not only of their particular electorates, but of course all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people from right across Queensland. Uh, to Dame Quentin Bryce, uh, welcome uh, back to the Queensland Parliament. You're no stranger to this place. And uh, we're very happy to have you here uh, in your capacity as the uh, co-patron of Reconciliation Queensland. To, uh, do I need to say Professor Dr Jackie Huggins now? It's getting confusing. Uh, wonderful to have you here as the co-patron of Reconciliation Queensland and also uh, to thank you for your work that you're doing uh, in terms of the pathway to treaty. Um, uh, we were only discussing uh, this week how the word treaty was not used, it was often um, deliberately asked not to be used by many people. I remember I used that word uh, when I was a Minister for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Partnerships uh, under the Bligh Government uh, 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 more than 10 years ago and we started uh, the conversation about the treaty then and I can say that it was met um, with a certain amount of uh, apprehension. Uh, thankfully, we've moved that conversation far forward uh, now. To, uh, to James Palmer, the uh, Asset President for uh, BMA, uh, the uh, BHP uh, Mitsubishi Alliance, uh, Peter Jackson, the Co-Chair of Reconciliation Queensland, uh, all other members of Parliament who are here, including the Shadow Minister uh, for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Partnerships, uh, John Paul Langbrook. And uh, can I say thank you to everyone who's joining us on live stream. It is a terrific uh, opportunity for people to even though we have such a vast state to have people coming together in such a way, uh, it is more than uh, obviously symbolism. It is a great thing to have that feeling of, uh, of unity that you would get from having a shared experience like this. Uh, to the clerk of the, uh, the Queensland Parliament, Neil Laurie, and of course uh, I do want to acknowledge uh, that we have our Parliamentary Service uh, Reconciliation Action Plan uh, champion, Janet Prowse, as well as uh, so many people here this morning uh, who are making a significant contribution, and I'll touch on a couple of them in a moment. Well, uh, thank you for being here in the People's House. This is uh, the People's House, the Queensland Parliament, and you don't get any uh, greater indication of that by seeing the terrific turnout we have here in person this morning and making sure that uh, you're all uh, here uh, on a shared journey, and that is about reconciliation. Uh, for me, reconciliation is a very personal journey. Uh, my wife, Kerry, is a Cookie Allenji woman, uh, and I'm the proud father of three Aboriginal children. And uh, for us, it is uh, uh, very important because we believe uh, that this is a, a, a massive source of pride, that we're able to uh, be part and live that closing uh, the gap and that journey of reconciliation. Uh, so for us, uh, it is something very special indeed. Uh, in my own community of Mulgrave, uh, in uh, far north Queensland, uh, I represent the community of Yarrabah, the largest Aboriginal mainland community in Australia. Uh, and it is, again, with a great sense of pride that I uh, acknowledge uh, the people of Yarrabah who are uh, continuing to lead the way in terms of their uh, own local governance and understanding uh, how they can continue to uh, set a great example for so many other communities around Queensland. So I, uh, I certainly pay tribute to them. You may be aware that we have a reconciliation action plan in place here at the Queensland Parliament, and I thank uh, Peter and Bill uh, for the work that they've done directly with us 
to uh, have that as a uh, uh, first in Australia in terms of the parliament having a reconciliation action plan. And it is the, the middle word, the action, that is important. That's what we uh, signed up for. We could have done a plan which was uh, an acknowledgement and one that was, uh, I guess, telling people that we were committed. But the action part is what we wanted and we actually will deliver um, some very important outcomes, we believe, in terms of our training uh, and employment practices and, of course, making sure that we are appropriately, uh, appropriately acknowledging uh, the, uh, the uh, elements that we should be doing that as a Queensland Parliament, uh, as a representation of all the people of, of our state. Uh, I will say that uh, we were very fortunate also to have um, uh, uh, Marjorie Elworth uh, with us today. She's our Indigenous Liaison Officer and she joins a great uh, long history of uh, having people like uh, Joe Stewart and uh, very long serving Indigenous Liaison Officer Brett Nutley uh, here at the Queensland Parliament. Uh, why that's important is I was at a uh, conference in New Zealand a couple of years ago, which is a very exciting conference. You can imagine it was uh, full of speakers, presidents of senates, legislative councils and clerks. So, you know, it was a, setting the world on fire in terms of conversation uh, and activities. But one thing that did get tongues wagging was the fact that we uh, in Queensland's parliament have an Indigenous liaison officer. No other parliament had one. And they were astonished that we were able to achieve that. And why I mention it is that it is really important uh, now with Marjorie in that role that we continue to have somebody at this parliament who is that gateway, that person who is able to bring people together, that person who is able to ensure that we are doing things in a cult culturally appropriate way here at the parliament. But importantly, starting the conversations around many different uh, issues. And uh, we're very grateful to have Marjorie uh, in that role. Uh, lastly, I just want to say um, that again that this is the people's house. Uh, this is a place for all Queenslanders and we're very, very proud to have you here today. And as I said at the outset, very, very proud to have three First Nations MPs in our parliament. Um, it is really important that our parliament is representative of the people of our state and you don't get that unless you have First Nations people being part of that process. Uh, I'm very, very uh, grateful for all of you for coming out today uh, and officially welcome to Queensland Parliament. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and congratulations on achieving this Parliament's first wrap and for joining the Government and the Judiciary, who both have stretch wraps uh, here in Queensland, and it's, as you've heard from the Honourable Paul de Jersey, we're the first jurisdiction in Australia where all three tiers of the Westminster government system that we operate under are all under wraps. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to acknowledge that, and I think it's been a great achievement of those three institutions to um, bring the first state in Australia to actually have a solid and uh, you know, and a brave commitment to reconciliation. I'd also like to acknowledge here today with us, we also have the Chief Magistrate uh, of Queensland, uh, Mr Terry Gardner, who's joining us here this morning as well. So, thank you. I'd now like to call upon the Honourable Craig Crawford, the uh, Minister for Department of Seniors, Disability Services and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Affairs, to give us a brief overview of the Queensland Government's commitments to reconciliation and path to treaty. Thank you. Well, good morning. Um, thank you, Uncle Bill. Um, can I first begin by respectfully acknowledging uh, the traditional owners and custodians of the land of which this event is taking place here today? Can I pay my respects to Elders past and present? And can I also acknowledge uh, Elders past and present in the areas uh, that are coming to us on, or we're going to them online 
uh, out in Queensland. Um, can I give quick acknowledgement? Um, can I thank uh, the, the Governor, the Honourable Paul de Jersey, uh, for his official video launch this morning? Um, can I acknowledge Dame Quentin Bryce, who's here? Can I acknowledge Dr Jackie Huggins, who's here? Can I acknowledge uh, my uh, parliamentary colleague, the Honourable Curtis Pitt, the Speaker of the House? Um, big, uh, big cheer out to, uh, to our three uh, uh, Indigenous caucus members here, the Honourable Leanne Enoch, um, Assistant Minister Lance McCallum and Cynthia Louie. Uh, can I acknowledge uh, all ministers, assistant ministers, uh, members of parliament, uh, uh, my shadow, um, John Paul Langbrook uh, is here. Can I acknowledge members from the opposition, from the crossbench, uh, who are here and also uh, up in the Undumbi room as well. Can I acknowledge Peter Jackson, the co-chair of Reconciliation Queensland, can I acknowledge James Palmer from BMA? And I think we'll be hearing from you next, James. Um, well, good morning. It's great to be here. And can I, um, can I thank the members and co-patrons of Reconciliation Queensland uh, and the Speaker and Parliamentary Services for jointly hosting this annual event? And what, what a fantastic roll-up it, it is. And Uncle Bill and I were having a conversation earlier about where next year's event might have to be because this room just isn't big enough, uh, which is a good problem to have, can I say. Uh, it's great to see so many people here today, uh, so many people upstairs, uh, and can I give a big shout out to, uh, to everyone uh, up in the Cookshire, the Cairns Regional Council, the Cassowary Regional Council, the Townsville City Council, the Mount Isa City Council, the Isaac Regional Council and the Rockhampton Regional Council uh, who are watching us online and thank you for your turnout this morning. It's always it's always challenging to ask people to come out for a breakfast event. Uh, we're all very busy people. We all look at our diary and go, oh, good grief, what time do I have to get out of bed for that one? Um, so thank you for making the effort um, for a very important event. Um, it's wonderful to be able to join you here today to, uh, to launch National Reconciliation Week here in Queensland. Uh, today marks the beginning uh, of National Reconciliation Week 2021. Uh, it's almost 30 years since our country's formal reconciliation process began and 2021 is also the 20th anniversary of Reconciliation Australia. As many of you here this morning know, Recon National Reconciliation Week commemorates two significant milestones in our reconciliation journey. The successful 1967 referendum on the 27th of May, which saw the majority of Australians take decisive action and voted yes to recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the national census, and also the 1992 High Court Mabo decision on June the 3rd, which resulted in common law recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders' connection to lands and waters and the introduction of the Native Title Act. These milestones have helped pave the way in advancing the rights and interests of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. It broadened our collective understanding about reconciliation and provided a framework for a fairer future. While reconciliation should be a constant process, National Reconciliation Week provides uh, a very focused opportunity for all of us to learn about our shared history, our shared cultures, uh, and also achievements. It's a time to listen, it's a time to share stories, it's a time to reaffirm our commitment to reconciliation. This year's theme, reconciliation is more than a word, reconciliation takes action, is vitally important. We know that effective and genuine reconciliation must involve genuine truth-telling. It also requires us to recognise the lasting economic, social and cultural impacts of the past acts of dispossession. The Palaszczuk government's commitment to effective reconciliation and truth-telling is reflected in our commitment to Path to Treaty. And again, I want to acknowledge uh, Jackie Huggins in the room here today. Um, Jackie and Mick Good are uh, co-chairing our Treaty Advancement Committee and I do want to recognise the work that, that they and others have done before them, not only uh, the Treaty Advancement Committee but the, uh, the eminent panel uh, and also the Treaty Working Group. It's a massive, massive body of work uh, and, uh, and it's something that, that I really implore everybody uh, to, uh, to think about how your organisation, your company, your department and even yourself, how, um, how you feed into the treaty process. For the first time in Queensland history, treaty or treaties is a real possibility for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Queenslanders. We're working to reshape and reframe 
our relationship with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people for generations to come. Last year, the government accepted and accepted in principle recommendations made by the eminent panel and the Treaty Working Group. We committed in principle to the establishment of a First Nations Treaty Institute and a truth and healing process. The Treaty Advancement Committee are undertaking further work right now to provide advice to government on the next steps, and that will happen over the next couple of months. Establishing a First Nations Institute, a truth-telling uh, and healing process will be important next steps towards reconciliation. It will give Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders the voice to share their stories and experiences. As a government, our vision is for Queensland to be a place where everyone, regardless of age, cultural background, abilities, feels welcome and able to fully participate in our society. That's why we are acting to build stronger relationships, respect and trust in all Queensland communities. The Queensland Government's Stretch Reconciliation Action Plan, endorsed by Reconciliation Australia and Reconciliation Queensland, contains 18 actions and 69 targets. Our RAP supports Aboriginal peoples and Torres Strait Islander peoples all across Queensland. The work of Reconciliation Australia, Reconciliation Queensland and other industry and community peak organisations to establish reconciliation industry network groups and regional reconciliation forums should also be acknowledged. These forums will enable stakeholders and First Nations groups to discuss the five key dimensions of reconciliation, the path to treaty and the Uluru Statement from the Heart. And for those who are needing to renew their wraps, I encourage you to incorporate activities to promote or sponsor truth-telling, healing and progress towards treaty. We also recognise the need to support local community organisations to promote reconciliation. We've provided $250,000 in funding through our Celebrating Reconciliation Grants program this year to support 48 National Reconciliation Week events across Queensland. We all have a role to play in reconciliation in the journey. I encourage all of you to play your part by attending one of the many local events being held across the state. These events are a step towards building more inclusive communities and an opportunity to learn more about our shared national story. Reconciliation is about recognising a shared past and respecting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first Australians. It is about encouraging every Australian, every Australian government, civil society and corporate Australia to play their part in facilitating reconciliation to understanding the ancient cultural fabric of the land they now call home, to understand uh, where possible undoing the devastating impacts of colonisation on the two oldest living cultures on the planet and to build a nation that collectively values and recognises Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander history, culture and contribution. Reconciliation is everybody's business. In closing, can I thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here to launch Na National Reconciliation Week. Can also thank Reconciliation Queensland uh, Incorporated for organising such a great event. And can I also uh, thank the sponsors, BHP, Yarn and Reconciliation Australia for promoting reconciliation and inclusiveness in Queensland. Um, have a great morning. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Minister Craig Crawford. Reconciliation as a movement may be a national priority, and whilst it has supported most governments across Australia, it would not have been possible to sustain without the support of the many corporate, community and not-for-profit organisations and peak bodies, such as in here in Queensland, Queensland uh, Local Government Association and others who have a strong rap in a lot of cases and a very strong social responsibility commitment to progress reconciliation in this country across its five dimensions. The reason I'm sharing this with you is that this movement has been going for 30 odd years. And essentially, if it wasn't for the help of some of the corporates and the bigger corporate organisations who are Elevate rappers in this room, this movement would still be stalled. And so I'd like to ask 
Mr James Palmer, the uh, asset president here in Queensland for BMA, which is part of the BHP group, who have been a major sponsor of not only Reconciliation, but also Reconciliation Queensland, as we begin to move and engage more of our local communities here. To actually come and share with us, you know, why, does it, why is it important for private sector, community and not-for-profits to have a wrap? And importantly, a little bit of insight from their journey. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr James Palmer. Well, uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, being in the resources industry, we, uh, we didn't have to set an alarm this morning and uh, certainly, certainly very proud to, to be here today. So thanks very much. Great to see a, uh, a full house as well. Uh, I'd first like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land that we meet today, the Turrbal and Yuggera people, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging, and uh, extend that respect to, to all First Nations people uh, in the room in Queensland and around the country uh, today. Also acknowledge the traditional owners uh, in BHP where we operate in Queensland and, and right across the globe. Uh, it's a real privilege for, for us to be here in National Reconciliation Week and uh, it's certainly one of the most important events on the annual calendar and great to see 20 years strong in, uh, in 2021. Uh, thanks Uncle Bill and, uh, and to Reconciliation Queensland uh, for the energy, I think, the, the passion and the dedication uh, that you, the role you play in reconciliation. Uh, it's just so important, the role that you're playing in, the, in leadership, not just today uh, or this week, but, uh, but all year and, uh, and ongoing. And uh, I think this helps community, industry, uh, everyone, First Nations people, working together to really change the face and, and putting actions rather than just words. Um, we're certainly driving towards a, a more just and, and reconciled Australia. And also to everyone in the, in the live stream and in the room, uh, welcome. Very, very proud to be here. BHP's relationship with Indigenous people, I mean, it's fundamental to, to our business and, and to our future, as it is for, for many industries. Uh, our operations right around the world are on the lands of First Nations people. And with this honour comes, comes great responsibility and uh, we take that really seriously. Uh, back in 2015, we developed global policies and commitments uh, and we live by those. And when we have a look at the, the theme for, for this week, being around actions over words, it's certainly our hope that all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples hold us to account to those words that, that are in our, in our wrap. Uh, we do have our Elevate Reconciliation Action Plan and uh, like some of the speakers this morning, very proud of that middle word there, it's, it's action. And uh, very proud of the commitments and the, the, the traction that we're taking towards those. Uh, I think the key thing is, if we listen, we know that we're going to learn. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what will be our sixth reconciliation action plan with the commitments that we've made, with some of the, the things we've already delivered and the progress to, to come. I think if I do have a look closer to home, and it's great to see the Isaac Regional Council um, uh, hosting the event in, in Moorumbah, community centre there where I've been many times. And uh, actually some of the things we're really proud of is the role that collaboration with traditional owners and communities, some of the, the action we've been able to take. The Moorumbah Airport, for anyone who's flown into there, um, gateway to, to our operations in central Queensland. So actually we've just renamed, um, so it's now the Bandara Airport, meaning sky. And uh, it, that for me is when you, when you come into that, it's a, it's a prominent and deeply important acknowledgement of the traditional owners there, the Barada Bana people. So we're very proud of some of the action we've been taking for, for a long time and some of those symbolic acts that we're also able to, to make. Uh, another example with the Wurrabinda Aboriginal um, Shire Council and CQ Uni. Uh, there with the Arts and Cultural Centre, the first of its kind in, in central Queensland. And it's actually, even though there's some fantastic First Nations um, art, it's more than an art gallery. Like it is, it's a, it's a meeting place, provides career opportunities and, and pathways, as well as acknowledgement. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. Uh, so today and, and for this week and actually all year, uh, as Minister Crawford said there, I mean, reconciliation, it's, it's everyone's business, uh, including resource companies but it's actually up to all of us as, as individuals. 
we've all got a role to play in furthering the, the conversation and bringing you know, just and, and equity to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander lives. Very proud of the, the role that, that we can play in that. And I think brave reconciliation, starting the conversation, that's what that looks like for us. So meaningful actions from coming together to make things right. So thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to acknowledge that um, we still have many of the communities out there still on the live stream and um, we ask them to stay with us um, as we continue with the live stream program. It's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Mr Peter Jackson, who's been, he has led the reconciliation movement or led reconciliation Queensland here as its non-Indigenous co-chair for well over a decade here in Queensland. And Peter's going to briefly share with us this morning some of his thoughts about our readiness to take action. And this year, how we can chart a new course with input from all stakeholders, and many of you in this room, to progress reconciliation here in Queensland. And also many of our stakeholders are actually listening in out in the regions as well. And it is time that we had, I suppose, a state of, we've got a state of reconciliation in Australia report. Maybe it's time here for us as a state to think about a state of reconciliation in Queensland report, where we can actually understand how we are progressing each year or every couple of years to actually really begin and to help our local communities to be able to address those five key dimensions of reconciliation in their local communities. We need to provide them with those tools. Mr Peter Jackson has been working alongside me and others at Reconciliation Queensland for a number of years and uh, I'll ask him now to share his thoughts about how we might progress that this year as well. Peter. Well, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land where we're meeting today, right throughout Queensland. I'd like to acknowledge elders past, present and emerging, uh, particularly those who are emerging nowadays. Uh, they will be the leaders within their communities and a very, very bright bunch they are. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge sorry business that's happening throughout the state. Uh, uh, Leon Firewood, my other co-chair, uh, is in the Torres Straits for that purpose at the moment. But we know that there is a lot of other sorry business that's happening, so I'd like to acknowledge that. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge all our special guests here today. We have got a lot of special guests. Uh, their names have been mentioned many times this, this morning, so I won't go through it all again, but uh, I acknowledge you all. Um, Minister Crawford, I really like the depth, the comprehensive depth of your speech today. There's stuff in there that I'd like to talk to you about. Um, it, it, it was a very... And he's given me the thumbs up, so that's good. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge the people up in the Adumbi room. Uh, it probably has a sense of isolation up there, but as Uncle Bill said earlier, you've got more space and you don't have big pillars in front. But as the Minister indicated quite clearly, there may be support for getting a much larger venue next year. Uh, and uh, this is an inaugural event for us. Uh, it did take a big e effort, and I thank all our committee members uh, for the efforts they've put in, in to ensure that this is successful. It is successful. As far as action goes, um, uh, I, I won't go down the track I was about to go, but it's a nickname that I received years ago in the media industry that I worked in. It goes with Jackson, I might add. Uh, so, uh, but, but having said that, um, I don't think action is really what we're about at the moment. I think it's traction. Uh, I can see the traction in this room. And so, you know, it's, it, it does come a long ways. I can remember quite clearly people in this room selling badges to raise basic funds for us to operate uh, when I 
became involved in Reconciliation Queensland, which is 15 years ago. And uh, I can remember what it was like before that. I can remember many things throughout my history. Uh, one of the, you know, the, the, uh, the referendums, the debates that took place around our kitchen table at home, around uh, the 67 referendum. And I can remember the successful outcome of that, which was wonderful, and certainly wonderful for our family. And I can remember the Mabo decision. And I had an opportunity to work in Townsville when Eddie Mabo was working on, the, on, the, uh, on his case uh, to the High Court. Uh, I was working in media up there. And I can remember interviewing uh, Eddie Mabo at that time. And people started at very basic grounds, you know, uh, and, and worked for things to be achieved. And now we know where we are here in 2021. And I wouldn't have comprehended that we could be making such large steps now, back in those early days. But look, it's, it's hugely successful now. And, and I think we have got traction. There's definite traction out there. And I thank all the uh, leaders of industry, commerce, even the horticultural area, not just even, but in particular the horticultural area. And I, I also acknowledge the grace of our First Nations peoples. Uh, right throughout that time, uh, things could have taken another turn, and they haven't, and that's true grace. So I won't keep talking about things, but I do appreciate all your support. I appreciate the support of all my friends that I've developed over a long period of time working in this field. We've done hard yards together, and uh, I also acknowledge the work of, of our co-patrons, Dr Jackie Huggins and, of course, Dame Quinton Bryce. They're true friends of reconciliation. So I won't go down any further. I think there's, we've had a lot to absorb this morning. Uh, Uncle Bill's given me the nod, uh, and I'm sure my committee members will all give me the nod. I can see Auntie Heather over there, one of my co-chairs, giving me a bit of a wind. Uh, and I appreciate all that. So, look, congratulations, everybody. Reconciliation is taking traction, and we look forward to working with you all very closely as we go forward. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Peter. And um, it's if the emotion that Peter demonstrated up here this morning is, is anything uh, and a comment on our readiness to proceed, I think we've turned a corner and I think traction is what we do see in this room. We do see a lot of people here who are motivated to do something about reconciliation. Before I introduce our, our next contributor who's going to give us a message of support, I really want to take this opportunity We've acknowledged a lot of the important guests here today, but in particular, it's a good, good opportunity now to acknowledge our elders in the room. And importantly, we have some, some uh, key elders sitting with us over here, with Minister Leanne Enoch on, on uh, table number one. And uh, I'd like to just take a moment of your time to acknowledge them. I might start with Uncle Bob Anderson. And Uncle Bob Anderson is a Kwandamooka man, and he has been a man who has supported reconciliation. He was a former chair of uh, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Council, uh, advisory council to the Queensland government for many years, and he has been a long-term, you know, sort of uh, champion for the Kwandamooka people. Ladies and gentlemen, Uncle Bob Anderson. I'd also like to acknowledge Uncle Bill Lower. Uncle Bill Lower is a Torres Strait Islander man, and you'll hear from Uncle Bill a little later on about his recollections of what was happening with the Council for Aboriginal Reconciliation in the period between 1992 and 2000. But Uncle Bill Lower has also been one of those men who are always there. He always stands up and he's always counted, and he's been a champion for Torres Strait people. 
Uncle Bill Lower. We have um, a person who I know quite well, happens to be my sister, Cheryl Buchanan, who's probably known in Queensland as probably one of the activists back from the Black Panther days. And uh, essentially, this is one of the things that we need to understand about the reconciliation movement is we are a big and a wide community. And so Cheryl also, for many years, was the deputy chair of the Advisory Council of the Queensland Government with Uncle Bob. And I'd like to acknowledge her this morning as well. Cheryl Buchanan. I should mention she's also a current serving member with uh, Minister Crawford's uh, Treaty Working Group and uh, is helping the uh, Treaty Advancement Committee with facilitation throughout Queensland. So we'll hear more from her later. Auntie Peggy Tideman, I'd like to acknowledge you as well this morning and the contribution you've made to the movement as well. Adi Peg. I'd also like to um, acknowledge our three current sitting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander members of parliament. And if I could, Lance McCullum. Lance, could you? Yes, here's Lance here. Um, Lance is also, uh, I think, the assistant manager for hydrogen. And that's really going to be explosive. <laughs> as we move forward. And uh, I hate to say it, but you know, uh, certainly I know Mick DeBrenny was unable to be with us today because of the problems we were having at Calide this week, but hopefully hydrogen is a solution for the future as well. And it's great to see an Indigenous person leading that solution. So I'd like to acknowledge Lance McCallum, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Importantly, also, Cynthia Louis. Uh, Cynthia is the member for Cook, but importantly, as I mentioned earlier, our first Torres Strait Islander woman uh, in, the, in the parliament. So, Cynthia, <laughs> Cynthia Louis. And last but not least, um, Minister Leanne Enoch, our first Aboriginal female parliamentarian. <laughs> Thank you, Leanne. And, um, I suppose for a lot of us who've been in the movement for a long time, and I, I remember back to the days, in the very early days, um, when we were still a land rights movement back in the 70s, and the, we had the tent embassy. And I was only a young fellow then, but uh, I tell you what, it gave me a great schooling. It also prepared me for what I'm doing today, which is standing up here, nervous as all buggery, sort of <laughs> in front of the whole of Queensland. And a lot of my peers out there, and, and mayors and others, and um, bringing to you the message that you need to be brave and you need to take action that's impactful here as we progress reconciliation. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce our next speaker, a young man also from uh, Uncle Bob and Minister Enoch's country, um, who is now the campaign director for one of the most important movements that uh, we're seeing in Australia, and that is the From the Heart campaign for the Uluru Statement. His name is Dean Parkin. He's a local Quandamooka lad who lives, lives across here at Stradbroke Island and he's leading the national campaign. Yesterday it was a bit cold and windy in Canberra and he recorded a message for us. He couldn't be with us today, but uh, we're going to play that message shortly and we'll also hear what's our 14 or 12 large Elevate RAP organisations also have to say about supporting. And I encourage all of you to support the, uh, the campaign from the heart for a voice for Aboriginal people in decision making about us. So we might hear from Dean now. My name's Dean Park and I am the director of From the Heart, a campaign for a constitutionally enshrined First Department. I'll be there with you this morning, um, but unfortunately I'm here in the cold camera. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Uncle Bobby Anderson and uh, my cousin, 
Minister Leanne Enoch that in the room today, two very strong, very proud uh, Quantum Mooka champions uh, for their people. Um, this, this year's theme for National Reconciliation Week being Reconciliation in Action, well, the way that we can make that happen is by winning a referendum on a voice to Parliament in the next term of Parliament. Action must have reform, and the key reform on the table for all of us right now is, is a constitutionally enshrined voice to Parliament. So I would encourage you all to find more information at fromtheheart.com.au and follow us as we build the momentum of the Australian people towards this historic reform. I hope you have a wonderful breakfast and, uh, and, uh, and happy Reconciliation Week. We represent diverse organisations across a range of sectors. Collectively, we educate, employ and provide services to people across all of Australia. Together, we make this response to the Uluru Statement from the heart. Thank you for your invitation to walk with you. In a movement of all Australian people for a better future. We recognise the Uluru Statement from the Heart as an historic mandate to create a fuller expression of Australia's nationhood. We hear the call for the establishment of a First Nations voice enshrined in the Constitution. And for a referendum to amend the Constitution accordingly. We hear your call for a Makarrata Commission to supervise the process of agreement making between governments and First Nations and truth telling about our history. In a spirit of reconciliation, we look forward to working with and supporting you as a matter of national priority to develop and enact specific proposals in relation to voice, treaty and truth. We call upon our people, industry colleagues and fellow Australians to join us, join us, join us, join us in this important national dialogue. And it's great to see so many high profile industry people getting behind that campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to conclude our proceedings here this morning. And before I do that, and uh, I ask for a vote of thanks to be given to everyone who's attended here this morning, I'd just like to acknowledge that many of the MPs are going to have to run away shortly because they've got a nine o'clock deadline to be somewhere else in the parliament. Today's a sitting day. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to take the opportunity, before we do that, just to acknowledge the time they've taken out of their busy schedules to come here and spend time with each and every one of you here at the table. And also I'd like to acknowledge the civic leaders in all of the centres around Queensland who are joined in today, who've taken the time out of their busy schedules to also spend time with their citizens at this launch as well. So ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge that contribution. But as I said, it's time to conclude our proceedings of this live streaming event. And I call upon our two Reconciliation co-patrons, Dame Quinton Bryce and Dr Jackie Huggins. And to give a vote of thanks for all who've contributed to this inaugural event. And ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Dame Quinton Bryce and Dr Jackie Huggins. Well, thank you. We're just chucking up who goes first. And uh, <laughs> as, uh, as I'm on Murray, I suppose, <laughs> I'll start off. Um, and uh, wonderful to see you all. And thank you very much for coming. And thank you to everybody else out there in Queensland. Uh, for joining us for this live stream. Um, firstly, I want to say there is just one word that really acquaints with this theme of uh, National Reconciliation Week, and that is the word of treaty. And we are doing it in this state, finally <laughs> and lastingly. <laughs> I want to thank um, my dear friend, Quentin Bryce, who is a treaty girl. She always has said that. Um, Cheryl Buchanan, Leon Filewood, who have helped us in this process. So, um, and, and we will be doing that. 
and thank you to the Queensland Government for giving us this uh, very overdue opportunity. For you know, We come together as this for all Queenslanders and we want to do it right and we want to do it properly. It will take time. I want to thank very much um, the co-chairs of uh, Reconciliation Queensland Incorporated. Um, that's Peter, Kalani Heva, and Leon. And Leon, of course, was uh, one of our treaty working group members as well. So um, thank you. How magnificent is this? I remember in the early days, we had such a struggle to even get, you know, $1,000 to help us out. Now, I hope that it's a bit more than that, <laughs> but it can get better people, so dig deep. Um, but thank you to the committee, the very hard-working committee, of who I know that uh, you are so deeply, deeply committed to this whole process and the process by which um, we move our people on, on in, in, our, in our state, but in our country. Um, so thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. And I'm going to hand over to Quentin because I'm, I always get a bit emotional around um, reconciliation because yeah. it is something that is in your DNA. Mm. Yeah. Once you get the grasp of it, once you feel it, once you own it, you can smell it, you can taste it. But it always stays in your heart. So, so thank true. you very much. Thank you, uh, Jackie. I, I uh, pay my uh, respect to the uh, traditional keepers and I always like to acknowledge the wonderful Indigenous women elders who've taught me across my life what it means to be an elder, sharing with me language, culture and uh, country. Uh, and to be standing here with uh, Jackie. Jackie Huggins, a most uh, distinguished, dignified leader in our country, admired, uh, loved, uh, who inspires all of us. And uh, for me, that's the word for this morning, inspiration. What, what a fabulous gathering uh, to be uh, sharing the uh, proud history of the reconciliation movement in our state, the brilliant achievements, to hear the minister talk about treaty. Uh, I am a treaty girl <laughs> and uh, we've all got to uh, leave this wonderful celebration uh, of reconciliation this morning with uh, renewed energies, with our batteries all recharged. That's what it does for us when we look back on the proud history, the hard work, the struggles, the commitment and the dedication of so many people that has led to uh, this day. Uh, it's a most uh, uh, significant uh, gathering, I believe. But we must all be asking ourselves in our hearts, what is it that I, me, myself, am going to do as an individual person, but also take to every organisation, every group I'm involved in, uh, the, the message of treaty, uh, to encourage and ensure that every Australian reads that beautiful, beautiful piece of poetry, the Uluru Statement from the Heart. Uh, and uh, for us to remember that the most important voice uh, we have uh, the most important tool we have is our voice uh, and to, uh, to use it uh, for uh, the uh, Uluru uh, statement uh, from the heart and what it means and what it signifies and what it stands for uh, for uh, the future of our nation. And I uh, want to acknowledge uh, so many dear friends in this room people for whom I have the utmost uh, respect and uh, affection. I have watched uh, Peter Jackson, Uncle Bill, the wonderful uh, leaders uh, who have been acknowledged at the table here, Cheryl. Uh, I haven't heard all of the Black Panther story, uh, <laughs> but the, this room is filled with uh, hundreds of inspiring stories that uh, give us the source of courage, inspiration, and fortitude that we need for the year ahead because it's going to be a vitally important one for reconciliation. Mm. Jackie, thank you for being an inspiration across my life too and for what you do for Australia, but for Queensland especially. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for that, um, that vote of thanks. And ladies and gentlemen, it's now coming to the end of our live stream and we're going to have to say, I suppose, goodbye to all of the centres out there who are actually hooked in with us this morning. I hope you found these proceedings this morning and in these proceedings I hope that each and every one of you, before you leave the live stream, um, consider if there was some small truth or is there a new motivation that you might have picked up here this morning that might help your organisation to move to braver and more impactful action to progress reconciliation in your local communities. And we thank all the citizens from all of the local government areas who've joined in today. And I do know that we invited also the mayors and councillors of all 77 local government areas around the state to join in. They have a great role to play in terms of civic leadership with local traditional owners and local Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander leaders in their communities, as well as the organisations who have RAPs and others in the community sector in those communities. They have a great responsibility now to begin a dialogue. And we at Reconciliation Queensland, our job as a peak body, and for other peak bodies who are represented in this room, we have a responsibility to assist them to be able to carry on that dialogue. So I look forward over the next 12 months to working with you to co-design, I suppose, a new way for that dialogue, not only to begin, but to be sustained over the next five to 10 years and hopefully bring reconciliation to a close. Many of our people in our communities, our elders, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous, have died over the last 30 years and have not witnessed the opportunity. You have it in, within your grasp this morning, whether it be here in Cairns, Cooktown, Moranbar, Tully, Mount Isa or Townsville, or the many other local government areas that are listening in this morning. You have it within your grasp to begin this dialogue and to do something and be brave and take some impactful action. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to consider that proposition and we are here to partner with you to make it happen. So with that having been said, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Cooktown, the Cookshire people and the citizens there uh, for being with us this morning. So uh, we'll say goodbye to you. So. Cheers. Also, uh, our citizens in Cairns and Tully, as well as Townsville, Mackay and Moranbar. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been great to have them on this live stream with us, and I'm sure it was great for them to see you with them this morning. What I'm going to do now is just ask you to take a moment to take some time and uh, do a bit of networking. It's time to meet the people at that table you've been sitting there sharing a meal with. And so if you could do that for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes. I know we had had um, an opportunity for Uncle Bob Lower and Artie Jackie Huggins. They may want to stay on a little later, but uh, we we'll probably, we might find, we might bring them back for a special session at next year's. Uh, event and I would really love to hear the recollections of that journey. So ladies and gentlemen, please take the time now to network and thank you for coming and to our members of parliament, a big thank you for being here this morning and I look forward to meeting each and every one of you in the days to come. Good evening.
Excuse me, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Those uh, down the back there um, and up in the Adumbu room, Uncle Bob Anderson has actually written a book, which he has got copies of it here for sale. Uh, so if, um, if you wish to buy one or have a look at the book, uh, please come down uh, and I'm sure Uncle Bob will make it available to you. Thank you.